This is a lesson on projectile motion in the kinematics unit. Projectile motion is a major culmination of several concepts, skills, and strategies prior to moving forward to circular motion, forces, and momentum and energy concepts. So as we see this, we're going to see many different things learned so far coming together and in review, we will need to keep in mind vector 2D vector decomposition with X and Y components and strategies of assigning a coordinate system and other right triangle trigonometry techniques in order to have X and Y components with vector decomposition. Once we get the vectors decomposed, we can use our strategies of 2D kinematics, which was covered in the prior lesson. We analyze the motion in the X direction separately from the Y direction. Often what is done is the acceleration in the X direction is allowed to be zero, such that these terms that refer to initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration are not relevant, and we're left to one simple equation in here in the X direction that relates the quantities there, and it's a constant velocity equation, right? If there's no acceleration, there means that there's constant velocity, and I can use the equation V equals D over T in the X direction. And notice this, this velocity in the X direction and the distance in the X direction. This is a separated analysis from what's going on in the Y direction. And with projectile motion, this will have a non-zero acceleration. In a prior lesson, we looked at what if an object travel straight up and straight down, or straight up or straight down. And we labeled this free fall motion, and this is in one dimension. Now we're looking at two dimensions, and projectile motion is a special case of 2D motion. An object in free fall motion, all the things that we studied in the one dimensional lesson, can happen and whatever the object is doing also moving in the horizontal direction. So we would have motion in the y direction separate and also happening at the same time in the x direction. And we're going to again note the acceleration is experienced in the vertical direction only. The acceleration in the x direction is zero, so I have constant speed. And in the y direction I still have this accelerated motion and you can see as these dots go across the graph in projectile motion, in the x direction, it travels the same distance every time period. When I look at the length of these intervals, these are all the same value. So there's constant speed in the x direction. In the y direction, you can see that it increases more and more distance as it travels downward. These vectors get longer and longer in the y direction, and so there's acceleration in the y and constant velocity in the x. The key concepts for projectile motion can help us in solving problems. The key concept one is something that we've been looking at. The motion in the vertical direction is analyzed independently of the horizontal motion. And when we look at that, we are going to use a different set of equations, which is concept two, a different set of equations for the x direction where the acceleration is zero, and the equations in the y direction where we have ay is gravity downward. Key concept three is that all special properties from free fall motion apply. So everything that we learned in the special properties there, and you can go back and review as needed, will apply as we move into the projectile motion problems. Concept four says that the time inherently entwines the x and y directions. Whatever motion happens in the x direction is the same time period that the motion in the y direction happens. So we're going to use that t value in order to relate the two sets of equations up here. The time here is the same time over in these equations, and so we can relate the two dimensions. A few tips on kinematics problem solving, and we saw this with 1D kinematics. 
Make sure we're reading carefully, interpretation and reading comprehension, attend to detail and that words mean things. We're seeing this consistently that little things in the problem give us values or cues for setting up the equations. We'll also make sure that we evaluate the assumptions well. We don't want to set up the problem wrong. Using a useful sketch helps you do that and assigning appropriate coordinate system. Again, we're in two dimensions, so we're going to need a coordinate system and also designate positive and negative. Signs matter. We're going to assign meaningful symbols to knowns and unknown quantities as we move through the problem. We can replace x and y where we need to in the different dimensions, and we can choose the efficient equations as we identify our knowns and unknown quantities to be able to solve. Solving algebraically is always a good idea before you put in numbers and then plug it into your calculator so you have intermediate steps of logic on your paper either for you to evaluate or someone else giving you feedback. And always when you get done, evaluate your answer for units is a good thing to do when you do a dimensional analysis on your equations, especially the algebraic one. And also, does your pro the answer make sense in the context of the problem? The first problem we're going to do in applying the projectile motion concepts is the bald eagle drops a fish problem. You can review right triangle trig in the primer in order to have some help in finding the velocity at the end of the problem. A bald eagle is flying horizontally at 6.7 meters per second when the trout in her talons wiggle loose and falls to the water 10 meters below. Okay, so I provided us a little bit of a picture here. In the beginning, and this is like the initial position up here, I'll put I for initial. Before I get too much further, I'm going to assign a coordinate system here. As the information we're given is in two different dimensions. We have an X dimension here and a Y dimension here, and this is enough to designate which direction is positive in each direction. Initially, the bald eagle is flying horizontally at 6.7 meters per second. I can draw that in here and the, note that as Bx as 6.7 meters per second. I'm going to assume the water is down here and we start with an initial y value, y initial of 10. And there's some distance traveled in the x direction as the trout falls the 10 meters downward. Okay, so I can write out this information. Vx equals 6.7 meters per second. I don't know what the displacement in the x direction is. In the y dimension, I'm going to note that y initial equals 10 meters and y final equals 0 meters. I also can assume that it's projectile motion. There's free fall motion in the y direction. So ay is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. It's downward in the coordinate system and downward is a negative value in this coordinate system. I'm also going to note when I think about the initial motion of that trout when the eagle lets it go, it's moving only horizontally. It doesn't hasn't attained any velocity in the y direction yet. So I can note that on here as well. The initial velocity in the y direction equals zero and the final velocity in the y direction is something we don't know but is what we're asked to find. Find the velocity of magnitude and direction of the final velocity when the trout hits the water. So there's a few pieces that we need to get put together there. When the trout hits the water, the trout is moving with some speed in the x direction and some speed in the y direction, right? It's going like this and it's going downward. So this final velocity vector will be at an angle and that's why it says magnitude and direction. So when we get the velocity in the x direction and velocity in the y direction, we'll think about this critically to find that final velocity vector. We know the velocity in the x direction Let's work on finding the final velocity in the y direction. We don't know time at all from the x direction or the y direction, so it'd be good for us to pick an equation over here that does not include time, but it has some sort of acceleration. 
The final velocity in the y direction is what we're looking so, for, so it seems like this equation is going to work for us. And I will write it out in the general form to begin with, solve it for the quantity that we're looking for, and um, plug your values in. And we want v final in the y direction, so that'll equal the square root of v initial y squared plus 2a y delta y. So let's plug some values in here. The initial velocity in the y direction is 0 plus 2. The acceleration is negative 9.8 downward. And also our displacement in the y direction, notice that delta y equals y final minus y initial. So we get 0 minus 10, and our displacement in the y direction is negative 10 meters. So when we go to plug this in, negative 10 here, and take the square root, we have the negative 9.8 times the negative 10, and we do not get a negative under the radical. When we solve this and plug it through the calculator, we get the final velocity is 14.007 meters per second. I'm going to leave that just in that value, I'm going to use it in the next step here where I look at this final velocity vector. What I'm going to note what I did prior is that the final velocity vector, which I'm just going to call v final with a vector over it, is at some angle. And it has the x component of the velocity, vx, and it has this final y component of the velocity, v final y. And those two are perpendicular to each other. That's the beauty of two dimensions is they are al always perpendicular to each other. When I solve for v final, I'm going to note that this is just part of a right triangle. I can also find this angle theta in here. I'm looking for magnitude and direction. So now that we recognize a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem and trigonometry in order to solve for the magnitude of v final, v final, the magnitude of it, will equal vx squared plus v final y squared. I'm going to plug these values in. vx squared will be 6.7 squared. v final y squared will be 14.007 squared. I will square root both of those added to together. And the final velocity, the magnitude of that, will be 15.5 to 7 meters per second when you run that through the calculator, which is bigger than 14. I can see that increasing that. When I look at theta, it will be the inverse tangent of v final y over vx, opposite over adjacent. So Katoa, opposite over adjacent. I will plug those values in. Inverse tangent of 14.007 divided by 6.7. When you run this through your calculator, theta equals 64.4 degrees. And we're going to note just in this picture here that it's below the horizontal. Always give an angle with respect to a reference axis. So I'll just say with respect to the horizontal here, horizontal. We are going to practice again on another problem, this time the soccer goal. I put the equations up here in the x direction and in the y direction for projectile motion. A soccer player kicks a soccer ball at 25 meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees above the ground in an attempt to score a goal from 8.5 meters away. The height of the goal is 2 meters. Does the ball make it into the goal? Determine how far over or under the goal the ball traveled. Okay, so it seems like we need a little bit of a picture going in here that would help us out. And what I'm going to do is um, have a soccer player over here. Here's the soccer player. Okay, and over here is the goal. And the soccer player is going to kick the soccer ball to the goal and it says that this distance here is 8.5 so I'm going to note that on here 8.5 and I'm going to assign a coordinate system already because I'm noticing that this is in one dimension and I have a height in the other dimension I'm gonna need two dimensions here and so this will be the displacement in the x direction is 8.5 meters the initial velocity vector, v initial, is up here. 
it's 25 and I'll note that over here V initial equals 25 meters per second at 20 degrees above the ground so I'll note that in here as well here's the 20 degrees in here 20 degrees and what we're going to see is when the soccer ball goes through the air when it reaches 8.5 meters in the horizontal direction where is it vertically right what is y final and we don't know what that is that will be something that we will need to calculate one of the strategies then I know is relevant is to find the time if I can find the time from one dimension I'll be able to use it in the other dimension time equals something before I get too far I'm going to divide the initial velocity vector into its two components you can see a prior lesson on vector algebra in order to do this but I'll draw a picture over here as well here's the initial velocity vector here's 25 here the initial equals that I can divide it into its two components there will be an x component v initial x and there will be a y component v initial y this is the 20 degree angle I'm gonna note that the y component is the opposite leg from the 20 degree angle so when I write out its value it will have the sign I can write 25 sine 20 here for the initial velocity in the y direction the x component is the adjacent leg, so that will be cosine so I can put 25 cosine 20 here and I can calculate these values but I'm gonna hold off just because I don't want to get my calculator out yet I'm going to remember that that velocity in the x direction is a constant value so that the velocity in the x direction is delta x over t and it seems to me I can solve for time knowing delta x and this constant velocity in the x direction and I can do that time equals the distance in the x direction divided by the velocity in the x direction so I can take 8.5 and divide by 25 cosine 20 you run this through your calculator and you get the time to be 0.36182 seconds okay so I know the time that the ball is in the air what I will do next is determine where the ball is at 3.62 seconds in the y direction where is it in the y direction that's what we're trying to figure out what is y final when I look at the different equations up here there are a couple that have y final in it or a displacement the easiest thing that I can do is pick one that doesn't have the final speed in the y direction in it I don't know the final speed in the y direction it's moving in the y direction but I don't know what it is nor do I care about it so I'm gonna stay away from equations that have velocity in the y direction final y final equals y initial plus v initial in the y direction times time plus one half acceleration in the y direction times time squared the initial y starts at the ground the initial velocity in the y direction I calculated that 25 sine 20 the time 0 0.36182 seconds I'm going to finish out the rest of the equation plus one half negative 9.8 remember that's a downward acceleration acceleration is downward in the y direction and then I'll put 0 0.36182 quantity squared in here when I calculate this y final I get 2.4523 meters let's think about that in the context of the problem and you may notice right away that that's larger 2.4523 meters is larger than the two meters at the top of the goal so we know that it's over top the other thing we don't know is where it is in that motion is it before or after the vertex of its projectile motion right it reaches a maximum height above the ground all I know is that it's 2.5 meters above the ground and what I'm going to assume is if it's going up it's over the goal and it won't make it into the goal It'll go way over the goal or if it's coming down it's still over the goal by 0.5 meters and 
will hit the goal probably, drop right past the goal. It's still over top of that goal line. So I'm going to assume that it does not make it into the goal. 